Back in 2015, the Paris Agreement made provisions for formal discussions among parties to check the progress of their goals in 2018. At last year's COP, that facilitative dialogue was renamed the Talanoa Dialogue. Fiji introduced the Talanoa as their approach to take stock of what countries are doing to reduce greenhouse gases. To use a traditional way of communicating in the Pacific in which uh, the people, when they have a problem, they resolve it by telling stories. Mm -hmm. And by telling stories, they generate empathy and then can get collective action towards an end. The process started earlier this year with technical dialogues among the parties at the international, regional and national levels. This traditional approach also accepted stories and evidence of climate change from cities, NGOs and civil societies. The Talanoa Dialogue started on Tuesday and culminated today at the COP24 in Katowice, Poland, with the small island developing states hoping for more than just a political declaration. It will culminate here uh, in Katowice with a closing technical session and then the political process began. There were uh, several Talanoas among about uh, small groups of about uh, 10 ministers and civil society uh, during the day yesterday. And the presidency today will bring all of that together and have a final outcome. From a small island's perspective, we would like that outcome to also contribute to a decision because the whole purpose of the Talanoa Dialogue was to ramp up the NDCs mm -hmm. to make them uh, much stronger. The Talanoa is... Um, it's not legally binding, no. Uh, no, and that is why we would like the outcome, uh, besides being a political declaration, which is what uh, is going to occur, also in, uh, goes into a COP decision, which says, based on the findings of the Talanoa Dialogue, parties are invited to do X, Y, and Z. The small island developing states are some of the most vulnerable to climate change. Rising sea levels, extreme heat, and rainfall are just a few of the threats to the existence of millions of people in these low-lying states. And so for SIDS, it is critical that the Talanoa Dialogue achieves what it is set out to do and that it takes stock of the IPCC's 1.5 degrees report. Because the set of NDCs only provide for a three degree uh, level of, of uh, warming, mm -hmm. while the Paris Agreement itself says we must go as far below two degrees Celsius as possible, aiming for 1.5. So that is the outcome that we're expecting, uh, hoping for today. On Tuesday, Fuller participated in a Talanoa on behalf of Belize. There, he shared stories about how Belize and Belizeans are affected by climate change. I reference the WMO's, the World Health Organization's State of the Climate Report, which said that the past four, four years were the warmest on record, that current uh, concentrations of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere are at, a, at an all-time high, never before seen in the past three to five million years. And when that did occur five million years ago, um, sea levels were uh, 15 feet above the present level, which means that Belize City, the coastline of Belize, and all our keys would have been underwater. So obviously that is unacceptable for us. It is a matter of survival. But we'll only know if the Talanoa Dialogue has made a difference if countries adjust their pledges over the next year to make them more ambitious than what was set out in the Paris Agreement. Reporting for News 5, I'm Andrea Polanco.